Uh, Alright, so today's question is uh, 398 random pick index. Uh, we are given an array of integers with possible duplicates. Uh, we uh, ask it to write something to write some code to randomly output the, the index of a given target number. You can assume that the, the given target number must exist in the array, so less, less corner case we need to handle. Uh, there is a note that the, the array size can be very large. Solution that uses uh, too much extra space will not pass the judge, will not be okay. So the example here we have array one two three three three. If we are asked it to return the index, randomly return the index for the number three, uh, the the number three appeared three times in the array at uh, indices two three and four. So uh, you know these three numbers have an equal chance of being returned if we call this method. Uh, if we call pick one, uh, we only have one number one here at the index zero, so that zero has a hundred percent of the chance being returned if we call pick one. So that's the um, problem here. Um, so this this uh, th this question has more downvotes than upvotes. Uh, that's something you can note. and. I guess the reason is this is super unclear what it means by too much extra space. Um, so uh, you better ask uh, if the interviewer saw this at you up front. Um, you're lucky you can ask him for clarification what exactly you mean by too much extra space. Uh, if he tell you anything above constant is too much, then you might have some uh, thought. Uh, you might be able to, you know, give him the idea uh, solutions that he want. Um, you know, the 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 fact that it's giving you an array of integers and and the signature here is giving you directly a reference to a physical list. It's uh, kind of making you even more confused the w why there is this such thing as a too much extra space. So if you are allowed to actually store the numbers of this uh, um, array, meaning that you have, uh, you, you can afford order and space, then um, a, a simple order and space solution would just be, uh, let me just quickly code this up, it's uh, pretty fast. So the nums, um, you, Collections, right? For index num. So what I'm gonna do is to create a hash map to store the indices for any given number that appeared in this array. So this hash map will basically store. Um, the number to indices mapping, uh, indices, indices, the list of indices mapping, and that uh, will be order of n, uh, the, that's the same lens of this nums uh, array. So when you ask it to pick one, so we, we just return random the uh, random choice and uh, self the nums target. So you just look up the all the indices for this uh, target number. Um, in the array and just randomly return one. Uh, this is um, this is a, a order of n space solution, and the pick method is uh, constant uh, in time and space as well. And in terms of uh, space complexity, the the constructor also have a uh, have to go through the numbers once. That's a, that's order order of n. So I think this works, yeah. Um, but but the real purpose of this question is to, um, you know, you, know you, you are not allowed to use any extra space actually. You, you are you are not any extra space uh, higher than constant. And um, I guess the better way of asking this question, if I were for the interview, I would say that um, instead of a physical array, I'm giving you an iterator. That you can, you know, call next to, to grab the next value, and you're only allowed to um, 
you know, w once I'm running out of number, I throw you a none. And after that, the next time you call, uh, you try to call, uh, I, I, will, I will basically refresh this. I, I'm s starting to throw numbers at you again. Um, so y y there is an indicator where um, you, you basically reach the end of the sequence of numbers, you know, streams. And uh, uh, maybe some other. Yeah, I, I would just say that I would just give you an iterator instead of a physical array, and I will ask you to uh, solve this without using anything that's uh, any space more than uh, constant. So then you, you still only want to go through the uh, the array of the integers only once. And when you see a target a value, you have to make a choice. Basically, you have to make a choice whether um, you want to remember this index number. Um, and the next time you see this target number again, you have to um, decide whether you want to update your memory. Um, and in, in the end, you want to make sure that uh, um, all the indices uh, that of the target value that you see throughout uh, the whole stream of numbers uh, is equally likely. So the the way of doing that is actually quite easy. So the first time you saw a number, the target number, you definitely want to keep it. So the, you, you got a one over one probability of keeping that index, in index number as your return value. The second time you saw this target value again, uh, you, you basically have to reduce the first uh, your your previous memory to be one half, and uh, uh, the current one current index has one half of the chance uh, be becoming the new memory. So you you basically just sort of run a sort of flip a flip a coin. If it's a head, uh, you don't change your mind. If you it's a tail. Uh, you update your memory to be the second time, sec second indices of the target uh, number. So, the third time you saw this number, um, you have to uh, decide whether you want to update your memory to return this uh, current, uh, the third indices number as the final result. And the the way you do that is you. Is there anything that's a three sided? Uh, there, there are three-sided dies. Uh, yeah, let's just say that you have a three-sided die. Uh, I'm not sure if there, there is. Um, basically, if it's uh, uh, with the number like uh, one, two, three, there, if 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 and only if that's three um, shows shows up, uh, you you update your memory. If it's a one or two, you don't change your mind. So the way it works is, um, let, me, let me draw a picture here. So if you see the first time that uh, something's coming up, uh, it has a probability of one being uh, returned, right? Uh, the second time, uh, you, you, you see the target value for the second time, you want to reduce the uh, first one to be one half. So you throw a coin. And if it's a um, head, you, you forget. And if it's tail, you don't forget, right? So you reduce the um, first uh, one being, being memorized, the first uh, indices being memorized by one half. And the, se the second one has naturally uh, one half of probability become the new one, new, you know, memorized one. So, the third time you saw a new thing, uh, the, the, target, uh, the target value, you have one third of the chance to memorize that index. That's, uh, so that, that number has one third of the chance. And uh, if you choose to um, not to update your memory, um, that's two thirds of the probability, right? And you have to multiply this by one half to 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 get uh, the the probability that you will actually return the first uh, occurrence of the target value in the end. 
and uh, this works out to be you know one third, one third as well. So uh, the strategy is when you go through the um, string of numbers, uh, you keep a track of uh, uh, the um, you know mem you the the location that you memorize for the target value, and you also keep track of uh, the number of occurrence for the uh, target value, and uh, when you see the target value you know new new target value here um, new indices for the target value you basically do a one over the total occurrence uh, probability updates to whether to use that new index as the return value otherwise uh, you, you don't change your memory that guaranteed to have to be you know make sure that every occurrence of the uh, target value have equal probability um, I guess I'm done doing a really bad job explaining this, uh, but, but anyway, just finish this coding real quickly. So, so in the constructor here, we only keep track of reference to the num. Um, that you can argue, uh, that's arguably just a constant uh, space because we only store uh, reference. And uh, for here. Uh, we can have a return to be minus one, initialized to be minus one or none or anything, um, it doesn't matter. And we keep track of the count of the number of occurrence of this target value, uh, we just start to be zero. And we iterate over these uh, um, stream of numbers. Uh, what we're gonna do is uh, when we uh, encounter the target number, we will make a choice whether we update in our memory or not. So this 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 uh, check can be anything. It could be anything that's in between any integer that's in between zero and count. Uh, but just for for the sake of uh, uh, my previous example, you know, when I throw a three fist die, I don't know if that exists. If the number is a three, I choose to update my choice. We update uh, the uh, you know return value to be the index of this new occurrence. And uh, we have to increment the uh, counter for the number of occurrence. And in the end, we just return this. So, yeah. So that that's um, that's another way of solving this. Just looking at the time and the space complexity for the uh, overall, we don't have any extra extra space. It's constant for the reference gear, and for these these variables, it's also constant. For the time complexity, the constructor takes a constant time. Uh, we're just initializing a variable, and uh, it takes. Uh, um, but for the pick method here, we have to actually go one pass through the numbers. So that's uh, um, order of n in space complexity, and in terms of. Uh, uh, in terms of time complexity, that's order of m, but for space, it's constant. What the? Yeah, so uh, I'm really tired today. I, I hope that I'm not schooling up at the analysis, but but yeah, it's just um, it, it's a uh, the pick. It's uh, more expensive um, if you do have to call this multiple times. Uh, Compared to the uh, you know previous HashMap dictionary uh, implementation solution, so yeah, I guess you you should ask uh, the interviewer how many times you're gonna call this pick method, and uh, 
And, and what exactly is given to you? Is it uh, a fixed array that's always going to be the fixed array? It's, it's just too big to be loaded into memory in one go. Um, you know, there are some mechanisms of uh, in the background to handle that. You're reading in chunks and uh, appears to you as a physical array, but it's not. So that uh, so in that reason, you cannot afford for a hash map or is that um, it's, it's really a string of numbers um, you know, you have to ask those things to clear uh, clear up the things, but but either way, um, if the pick should be called multiple times and the num is fixed, uh, go for the hash map solution. If um, you you know if it's uh, okay that it is the uh, order of n here, and you don't want any. Uh, you know, beyond any space that's beyond uh, constant, go for this one. Uh, and the, the, you know, just work through a couple of these uh, examples and uh, hopefully you can convince that uh, this will guarantee to be unified, uniformly random. Uh, yeah, let's submit this as well. Okay, so that's the question for today.